Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. We are the Sales Wolves. Oh! That was better. Yeah, we're, getting, we're getting better. We're getting there. Right. This is episode five uh, of the Sales Wolves Podcast. And uh, as always, we want to go through real quick the whole reason for us doing this podcast, right, which right. that task is twofold. First is just to show appreciation. Um, for the most you know honorable uh, profession in the world, uh, which is sales. And, that's what we like, feel. Yeah, that's what that's what, how we feel, and, and the reason is because there wouldn't be a single product consumed, shipped, manufactured if not for someone selling it. That's right. Uh, and those people uh, deserve uh, appreciation because they don't get it uh, yep. a lot. And uh, and so that's our that's our first task, and probably the most important. And secondly, um, what's the second task? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> provide tactical training, man. We want to we want to give you something you can use, right? Whether you show up to a so-called sales job, okay, whether you have a product or a service that you show up to sell every day, um, or you're a single parent, or you're a doctor, or you're a lawyer, or you're trying to sell your kid on something, or you're you sales is involved in everything, and um, so we just want to provide tra tactical training there, and we want to do that for free. You know what's funny? I was thinking about that this morning, Tyler. Um, when we say we want to provide free training, the training is free. The application and the implementation mm -hmm. of using it will cost you something. It'll cost you something. And, uh, and you using the training is, uh, um, God, that, 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 price is, uh, that <laughs> price is steep sometimes, right? Absolutely. Uh, to, uh, to become excellent at what you do so anyway it's kind of like Gary Vaynerchuk always talks on on his videos the daily V videos that he does he always talks awesome about my video. goal is for you to to not watch these videos anymore yeah because you actually go out and do what I'm what I'm talking about um, which is interesting and and there's been times in in my career um, here lately especially where you know I used to watch like videos like that like every day just constantly yeah and then I've gone now weeks where I haven't been able to watch any Right. And I look back and I'm like, huh, now I know what he meant by that. Because you're because implementing I'm busy it. doing. <laughs> right. And, so and, it's interesting. And sitting there listening to it is one thing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And he provides free content, unbelievable, unbelievable. content. Him, yeah. Andy Fursell, I love those guys. And, and they've helped us so much. I mean, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's free content they're putting out there. You can, you can consume that for free. But when you apply it, it costs you something. Oh, yeah. It costs Absolutely. you something. It costs your time, your effort, your energy, and change. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to change you, I mean. Absolutely. So we'll go right into to today's topic, which uh, to be a leader, you have to follow. Wait, no, that's not right. To be a leader, you have to follow up. And today's topic is all about uh, the follow-up and that portion of the sales process, which is probably the most important, would you say? It is vital. So we've got some tips. Um, we'll call them sales wolves tips. We may think of a yeah. better, better way to sales wolves action items. That something sounds terrible. That's even worse. <laughs> we'll, think of, we'll think of a pun um, tip, by, tip by the next whip. episode. Tip, tip, <laughs> a tip from the whip. Tip from the whip. Tyler <laughs> does a tip from the whip for our organization every week. I do. And that sounds, that sounds weird. <laughs> but, <laughs> but getting right into these tips, um, with, when it comes to the follow-up, the first one we want to go through is, is probably one of the most important, and that is you always want to have a clearly defined next step after Always. every conversation after every meeting if it's an initial meeting if it's one of your third fourth fifth meetings if it's on your tenth phone call yep. that you never end that call or in that meeting without having a clearly defined action item okay so so here's what we went over today and here is our next step yep. and put a time stamp on That's that right. next step because unless you do that you're gonna walk out of that room you're gonna hang up that phone and then the next time it comes around to give that that person to call you have nothing really to go off of you have nothing you have nothing set in stone it's all about accountability keeping right. both keeping yep. each other accountable right well there's if you look at it like a timeline you're starting here with a prospect or I'm starting here with Tyler mm -hmm. and I want to get Tyler to here right and so on the follow-up if I don't 
if I don't clearly define my next step in our interaction, if I don't, if there's not a call to action, yeah. um, if there's not, if it's not moving you this way, then the next time we talk, where am I? Mm -hmm. I'm at the same place mm -hmm. or further behind. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So, so that's why you do that. What, what was the name of the, uh, the guy that we had come speak uh, to our entire organization about accountability? Remember when we, Mike uh, Scott? Mike Scott. That was, was one of the great. biggest things. So the the entire subject was on accountability, but this one topic was a big focal mm -hmm. point. And it was and it was not just it was not just with uh, in a sales process. It was with your relationships. Right. If 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 you ask your your spouse or a friend or a coworker, if you ask them, hey, I need you to get this done, and when do you think you can get that done by? Yep. And if they don't have an answer for, I, I'll get that done by Thursday. Okay, great. So. You're going to get that done by Thursday. Great. And then, and then it gets done. It, yeah. Rather than, hey, man, you think you can get that done? Yeah, yeah, I'll get it done. Nothing ever happens. Yeah, it piles up behind everything else, right? Yeah. And, and, and who said, I don't know who said this, but it's great. You've probably heard it. You've probably seen it on, on you know, on memes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Mimes. Mimes. <laughs> Mimes. But, uh, but you inspect what you expect, right? And so that's like, that's like with my kids, right? I, t I tell them to brush their teeth and, and, um, and you know, when kids are learning to brush their teeth, they don't, they're not that great at it. Like you literally look at their teeth and like, you, you didn't touch your teeth. Like I don't even smell the toothpaste and you're telling me you brushed your teeth, right? So, so you have to inspect what you expect. I, I, for the longest time, my kids would come to me after they brushed their teeth and be like, Daddy, do the test. Do the test. Because I would test them on yeah. it. And now they're in habits of really taking mm -hmm. care of their teeth. So, yeah, absolutely. Anyway. So, next, next key, uh, next tip is figure out what the preferred form of communication is with the person that you're communicating with. If, if they want to communicate via text, that's awesome. They yeah. want to do it via phone, via email, whatever that is, is fine. But you just want to make sure that you have clearly defined that, um, hopefully in the first uh, interaction with that person. But it's as simple as saying, hey, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Or what's the, what's the best way uh, to get in contact with you? If you, um, if you asked me, if you didn't ask me that and you assumed it was email, mm -hmm. sore mistake. Yeah, absolutely. If you asked me and you had a text, I'll answer a text. I'll answer every single text I get, yep. right? Whether I even know the person or not, they send me a text I'm because it's right there and mm -hmm. it's easy and I have people that check emails, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and so yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't get some of those. So that's exactly, I mean, and speaking it sounds of, weird. But. And, and speaking of emails, uh, another important kind of next level step uh, to that follow-up is finding out if they do say emails, asking them, what, what's the best thing for me to put in the subject line of the email for you to actually get it? Oh, that is get, great. There are people that get 25, 50, 100, 500 emails a day, yep. and yours is just one in the in, in the in the oh, yeah. in the mix, and you get lost in the pile. But uh, I was reading an article um, yesterday, and it was talking about uh, one person used an actual specific example. He said there was a guy that said, "Put green light in the subject, and I'll read them every time." And that's what he tells important people that no that uh, that are going to be emailing me. He said, "Hey, make sure you put e uh, green green light in the email subject." And he knows that those are the ones that he's going to go to first and read. Um, so if you're able to yeah. get that kind of buy-in from somebody on on a on a uh, on a communication, you're you know what kind of question they call yeah. that, right? What's Asking that? somebody, "What do I put in the subject line?" You know what kind of question that is. Mm -hmm. We just read an awesome book on it. Uh, it's the one behind the question. It's the one behind the question. <laughs> it's the question behind the question. QBQ is a great book, by the Absolutely. way. If anybody's looking to grow themselves and, and looking on accountability, follow-up, and, and personal responsibility, that book is second to none. And, and the last thing I would say about the what form of communication is just because they tell you, you know, hey, email's the best, just shoot me an email, doesn't mean to avoid the other forms of communication. True. So if you send them an email and they don't respond, you still need a call text whatever you need to do carrier to get a smoke hold signals up, show up yeah. whatever you need to do uh, you still need to use all forms of communication uh, not just the one that they said was preferred yep. but start with the one that they said was preferred sure so the next one is super super important amateurs touch base and check in sales wolves have specific reasons to be reaching out to That's the exactly prospect. right I can't tell you how many times I answer my phone and somebody says, somebody says, hey, I'm just touching base That's, with you. I'm like, ah. It's, oh, that, what it's are we the touching? biggest tell of a non-winner, yeah. probably. Yeah. 
And it's the biggest tell that I answered the wrong phone call. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you don't have, if you, the thing is, the, the reason doesn't even have to be earth shattering. It no. doesn't have to be some big, huge deal. It can be as, as, as simple as having some little piece of information. On the last podcast, I believe it was the, uh, last week's podcast, I talked about when I was a financial advisor, and yep. I would literally pick any news piece of information to call them, mm -hmm. but I would call them up and say, hey, Here's why I'm calling. I wouldn't just call and say, hey, Mr. Jones, was just yeah. touching base to see if you're ready for that financial review. You had to have a reason to call. And this is what it sounds like. This is, this is what it'll sound like. Hey, Tyler. Hey. Hey, this is Joseph. Uh, just, uh, just calling to check in. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing okay. You, you see, you already hate me. <laughs> yeah. You already hate my guts. Absolutely. Right? Because I just wasted 30 seconds of your life. Mm -hmm. And we're all busy. And he knows I don't care how he is. He's yeah. not going to ask me how I am. Yeah. He, he, so, so skip the formalities. Be real and do. What, you wrote the line in here. The reason for my call is boom. The and then first call to action. The first or second sentence should contain that phrase. Yep. Uh, so if you're calling up and you're saying, "Mr. Caldwell, this is Tyler Harris. The reason for my call, go right into it. Let them know that you've called for a reason." Yep. And we're about to hear it. And and that's the best way to set up any type of follow-up. I sure. will never I will never interrupt that person to hang up on them if they do it just like that. If they tell me, uh, yeah, Tyler Harris, this is Joseph Caldwell. Listen, the reason for my call is, mm -hmm. and they go right into it, mm -hmm. I go, this person is not wasting time. I like yeah. this. Yeah. Let's let's hear what the reason is. Absolutely. I may interrupt them in the middle of the reason. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason and the reason for your call can be as something as simple as this, like with, with what we do. Um, and, and scheduling agencies all the time. Um, I'll have I'll have a, a prospect or a, or a, a someone that I haven't haven't closed yet that I've tried to get on the schedule, and I'm always giving them two options. Now I've always let them know, hey, that next action item, that next step is I've got the week of April 1st and the week of, week of April 8th available to come and meet with you. Um, which of those two weeks would work best? And so when I'm calling up, I'm, I'm calling up on those two weeks. So my reason for calling may just be to tell them, hey, just wanted to let you know mm -hmm. from our last conversation, we talked about April 1st and April 8th, those two weeks, but I had to book so-and-so agency on April 1st. So now the two weeks I have available are April 8th and April 15th, which of those two weeks would work best. So just simply telling them, which triggers in their mind, oh, he booked somebody else, he's still booking yep. people. About the third or fourth time you call and tell them that you booked something that's nearby them or someone that they probably know. That we say to do. But it gives them a reason, it gives you the reason to call them, but it gives them the ability to just build more credibility. Uh, of, of you're building credibility for yourself, but you're doing it by letting them know that hey, I'm calling you for a reason and right. with a reason. So. And you, you, you could look at it this way too. If somebody called, if somebody called me and they and they had been trying to get a meeting with me, they're following up with mm -hmm. me, something like that. You two in this office, and they said, I'm gonna be at your location, 221 Pelham. <laughs> I'm meeting with your creative people at 11. I wanted to get your meeting set up for 10 or 10:30. Which one works better? Mm -hmm. I already know the guy next door that shares office space up here mm -hmm. with us is meeting with them. Yeah. And I already know he has a great business. Mm -hmm. So if he's meeting with them, you you see what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. it's just it's it's what type of follow up. Once you get people to actually follow up, it's the type of follow up that matters as well. So. So the next one is is. Timing. So timing, obviously timing is everything and, and that's, that's kind of universal. But with sales calls, it's so funny how often we see people that they make sales calls at the same time every day. Yeah. And then those same people are confused and, and upset when they're not getting any results and when they're not able to even get anybody on the phone. They're like, right. well, when are you calling? I'm, well, I usually call first thing every morning. Yeah. Well, I'm like, every morning? Every every have morning you tried in the afternoon. Have you have you, have you tried a call in the at evening? <laughs> <laughs> like oh well, you've you've I, I've called this guy fifteen times. I just can't get him on the phone. But you've called him at the same you know two hour window every single time. Uh, so what you need yeah. to do is you need to try every single try Sorry. early morning, a mid morning, a early <laughs> afternoon, an evening, whatever it takes. Yep. Uh, but you, you've got to mix it up every single day. And I I personally think you should mix up your block of sales, uh, your block of time that you're using using for sales calls, but specifically with an individual person that you're trying to get a hold of. If you call them today in the morning, call them tomorrow in the afternoon. 100%. Um, and, and that's kind of what you wanted to go over, I think, uh, some stuff as far as that relentless pursuit and the, the frequency. kind of the old school. Yeah, the old, there, there's a lot of old school mentality. Um, 
and I'll try not to get into our next podcast mm -hmm. uh, right. that we're going to do next week. But uh, but there's old school mentality with this one. When, so I make a phone call today and I didn't get the prospect or I shot an email today and I didn't get the prospect. Well, how long do you wait? Hmm. What's the amount of time? What's the professional or what's the what's the proper sure. amount of time to wait? Um, let me ask you something. If you were calling uh, fire chief or you know in our industry, if you're calling somebody to, to set up an appointment and you don't get them that morning, when's the next phone call? If I get if I call them early morning and don't get them, I'll call them late morning before lunch. And then? And then after lunch. And then? Before the end of the day. So old school mentality is I called them once today and they almost do it to mm -hmm. check it off a list. Mm -hmm. I called them. Sure. And then we'll 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 push that guy to Monday next week. Mm -hmm. That is a cancerous thought process that mm -hmm. needs to be sliced out of your head as fast as possible, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's no there's I, I'm I'm telling you there's not too much there's not too much follow up there's not there's not too much persistency yeah. there's not there's not too much frequency. Mm -hmm. If if I had somebody walk through my door every day for five days, I promise you, at some point in time, they're going to get to see me or the police, mm -hmm. right? And if the police show up, then you know you probably need to go to a different office True. building and start calling on there, mm -hmm. right? Um, but uh, and, and this is and this is in regards to being able to get a hold of someone. Obviously, sure. you're not going to call them and talk to them four times a day, no, or every single day, right? But to get a hold of them, you got to call them until you get a hold of them. Sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's just, you that's told just me one time you called to to follow up with a place that you had already met with. Mm -hmm. You called how many times? Met with them how many times? Oh no, 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 not met with them, but showed up on the on the doorstep. What I was had, it? it? I think was I had seventy five outbound calls to them. Yep. That were never returned. Um, I had stopped by 11 times Yep. and I can remember it just like it was yesterday. I was driving to just randomly stop by again and, yep. I, and I called Joseph and I said, I was like, Hey man, um, if you get a call from the police <laughs> or if I call you from jail, it's because I just performed a sit in <laughs> at this, in, this <laughs> in the lobby of this department yep. and I'm not leaving until someone meets with me. And even as I was driving, I was down in Atlanta, I was driving. And it was about 3, 3.30, and I knew Atlanta traffic was going to get super yep. bad on my way back. And as I was driving, I almost turned around three or four times. I'm like, this is stupid. I'm going to go there. They're going to give me the exact same excuse like they did last time. And every time, this is a waste of time. But I was like, ah, let's, you got to show up. Yep. And so I go there, and it just so happens that the sheriff was walking down the stairs to leave to go to the gym. And I look up at this picture of the sheriff, and I look up at the stairway, and I see that that's him. And I just walked right up to him, and I said, I have made 75 inbound calls to try to get a meeting with you. And this person right here will not ever return my calls, will not set an appointment with you, and I have a problem with that. <laughs> and he said, well, what's the problem? He said, what do you do? In five minutes, explain what I did. He said, here's my personal card. Let HR know that we'll get this all set up next week and get you scheduled. If I had not showed up that 12th time, would have still not, and I think I wrote like 350 life insurance policies there Good in two weeks. gracious. In two weeks. So the follow-up was worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it. It was, it was worth it. It was worth it. Well, man, that, that, what was uh, talking to you on the way over there telling you to turn around? Who was that guy? Uh, it, was, it was doubt. It was fear. It was just, uh, it was... <laughs> I, can, I can tell you who it was. Who's that? It was the loser that you're putting to death. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, everybody has it in them. Everybody has a loser and a winner in them. Yeah. And it is the dichotomy that goes on. And the loser tries to get you to lose, and the winner tries to get you to win. But most people, we'll get into the balance part mm -hmm. next, next, next time, mm -hmm. but most people try to put to death the winner a lot of times. Yeah. Or they slowly kill him by listening to the loser, by sacrificing and compromising. I'm so glad you didn't do yeah. that, man. That's a great example. Yeah. Great I, mean, example. I can remember when I left there, I mean, I was so amped up. I, I called Jason, <laughs> I'm like, you're not gonna believe what just happened. Yeah. I'm like, of all things, the sheriff was walking down the stairs. Like, unbelievable. And, and just I got think that set that up. you hadn't showed up. <laughs> yeah, right. And so the last tip we wanna talk about is, is keeping detailed oh, notes yeah. Of your That's conversations, cute. of your meetings, and I don't care what kind of CRM you use, just use one and use it diligently 
And so here's how I do that. So for me, I will print out my call sheets. Mm -hmm. I'm just a little old school in the way I do that because I'll write the notes out. And so when I get off the phone, I'll just scribble down some notes. Boom, done. Yep. Later that night, or what I'll do is I'll have someone else mm -hmm. enter those notes into the CRM. One of the best ways to do it, and the way I do it when I'm doing um, my initial meetings, when I'm actually driving to locations and meeting with people, is I use my voice recorder on my phone. Those are fantastic. So any iPhone, any phone at all, it's got a voice recorder. Yep. And so I'll just say, hey, uh, it's April 1st, 10 a.m., just left so-and-so's office. Here's what happened. Here's the follow-up. Here's the next step. Make sure I do this. Done. And then at the end of the day, and the key is at the end of the, the day, end at of the night, day. or on the weekend, yep. then plugging all that information into the CRM so that you have it there. Not using oh. Oh. income producing time. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people trick matters. themselves and do it that way. They go, oh man, I worked hard today. And they did actually, actually. They were busy. Things. They were busy. <laughs> they did two hours of, of, of solid work. Mm -hmm. And then they were busy the rest of the time, um, you know, getting coffee and mm -hmm. plugging in stuff. That's, that's, that is not, a CRM is not there to, it's to help you so that when you go that next step, you know what you're going to do, you know how to follow up, it jogs your memory, but it is not there for you to, for you to waste time on during the day. Yeah, absolutely. And it'll help you uh, on that next call to have that reason for my call because you'll be able to quickly see what exactly you went over last time, what that yep. follow-up step is. And it just, it just makes, it's, it's really your, your, your hub for the entire yep. process. And a CRM um, can be anything from, and what that is is a customer relationship management mm -hmm. software. And they have all kinds of electronic ones. I mean, yeah. we've seen them all. They're, they're they're out there. But you can use something as simple as a notepad. Yeah, use a notepad. Right? I, I Excel. I used to use just Excel and a notepad yeah. uh, all yeah. the time. Um, but yeah, so so that is what it is. Um, any final thoughts on uh, on following up? We're about done. You just got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> So we went over those statistics last episode on the percentages of of how many sales are made on the second, third, fourth, and fifth call. Right. Um, which you know, GoPack can definitely watch that because that's super important. But something that I read uh, this week talked and on about the frequency. Didn't we do a podcast? I mean, we've only done like four, but didn't we do one on, on persistency? Up? Yeah, showing, on showing up. up. Yeah, yeah. That that person that goes along with the frequency too. You can go back and watch that one. That one was. Good. There was one theory that I was reading this week, and it was talking about the theory of five no's and basically mm -hmm. saying that, you know, what they told their people was until you get five no's or not now's to keep calling. Keep going. Uh, and, you know, you hear the, the phrase politely persistent. And that's, yeah. that's, I mean, that's really what it is. To me, someone that is following up at the level that we are talking about following up, uh, the relentless pursuit only, it only uh, conveys the sense of urgency. That's right. Um, if you're calling with a reason. Now, if right. you're just calling nonstop and you finally get them on the phone and then you say, we're just calling to touch base. We're and just like, calling to touch I've got base. 18 missed calls from you for the last two weeks and you're just calling to touch base. That's why you have to have that reason to call. Now I'm calling the cops. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get a restraining order. But, but at the end of the day, I think that's probably one of the biggest mistakes salespeople make is, is stopping short on the, on the follow-up process. It's the biggest mistake. Right. Not getting started mm -hmm. and stopping short. Yeah. So we appreciate you tuning in for Absolutely. episode six of the Sales Wolf Podcast. Five. Is this five? This is five, my friend. Man, they're flying by. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is taking forever. <laughs> <laughs> episode five of the Sales Wolves Podcast. But next week is going to be a Barn burner. Is that what you say? A barn burner? I think barn is that burner a southern, would be it. Is that probably a southern... Uh... It's going to light somebody's ass on fire, I can tell you that. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's it's going to be hardcore, and, and it's going to be on work-life balance, and the the fact that it's an absolute fantasy, hoax, myth, right. all of that wrapped in... You're going to need giant. the beep button a lot, because uh, yeah. I'm going to get excited, and, and I'm probably going to say gonna some We're going to have to finally use the explicit content but not we will have to use on, the explicit uh, content. You actually have to do that. Do you? Do. I'm going yeah. to. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's coming. If you don't want to see explicit, don't watch the next one. But if you actually want to grow in your life and figure some things out, you may want to watch it and not get offended. If you are enjoying these podcasts as much as we are. <laughs> <laughs> All three of you. Do, <laughs> do, us, do us a huge favor uh, and share it on Facebook. That's the best yeah. way to get this out there. Uh, we have had so many cool... Uh, 
messages come to us so where yeah. it was a random person that shared it on their news feed and one of their Facebook friends saw it in the news feed and, and started watching and then we got a message and it was like hey so and so uh, shot me this uh, on Facebook and I've been watching it uh, watching it I've been watching it uh, every week That's and man nice. you guys are really you guys are really uh, bringing the heat and you guys are really you guys actually there was one specifically this week that told me something very specific that we had said that they had implemented and it helped them. So that's, fantastic. that's the entire reason. That is that is the cost of admission for us. That's it. One hundred percent. That keeps so, me up at night and gets me up in the morning. If, if it, taking people from where they are, <laughs> giving them the tools to take themselves where they want to go. <laughs> so I want to spend the rest of my life doing. Absolutely. So with that, that is episode five of the Sales Wolves. I am Tyler Harris, Joseph Caldwell, and we are the Sales Wolves. Hi!